Well, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Jason. Uh, this is my family here, and my son Aisley. So I'm uh, super glad that you guys are all here tonight. So this is kind of a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer, but has anybody watched their parents? Yeah, me too. It's so easy to say if they ask you to clean your room. And you don't want to really clean your room, and you want to go skate, play your Xbox. First thing you say is, "Yeah, clean my room." And that's really a temptation. And if you're a Christian, I would say you're going to be tempted your whole life. New Christians, mature Christians, young Christians, older Christians, we're all going to be tempted. And especially if you guys are skaters, I think you're going to be tempted with drugs and alcohol. My son and I were at Northland State Park last week, and uh, it was my son and I and two probably middle school kids. We were skating in the bowl, and this dude just rolled up. He was like, hey, you want to buy some bud? I was like, I was right there, an adult, a little kid, and these two middle schoolers, and this guy just didn't care. So. Unfortunately, in the skateboarding culture, I think you guys, if you haven't already, you're going to be faced with temptation to try drugs and alcohol. So for a Christian, I'm going to show you the first time that Satan tempted Adam and Eve in the Bible. So I'm going to set the stage. We're going to be in the book of Genesis, the very first book in the Bible. And the very first verse in the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So God creates the earth. He creates everything in the earth. And he is the creator. So then God creates man. And this is in verse, chapter 1, verse 27. And God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. So God created us to reflect to creation who God is. God charged us to have rule over all the animals, but we were supposed to be under God's headship and show creation who God is by us having dominion over the animals, but yet we're being submissive to the Father. So God created us to reflect who he is, and at the end, God created, he said, his creation is good. In verse 31 of the same chapter, it says, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. There was evening, and there was morning the sixth day. So, God created everything in the heavens and the universe. He created us. He created the animals. He created us to reflect God's character to creation, and it was good. And then in the next chapter, God gives Adam and Eve a command. The Lord God took the man and placed him in the orchard of Eden to care for it and maintain it. Then the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat fruit from every tree of the orchard, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will surely die. That's pretty plain, right? God didn't really mix his words when he said, You can eat from all these other trees, but from the one tree you must not eat. So now we're going to learn about... Satan tempted Adam. So in chapter 3, at the very beginning, it says, Now the serpent, the serpent is Satan, was more shrewd than any wild animal the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Is it really true that God said you must not eat from any tree of the orchard? Is that what God said? No, that's a lie. The woman said to the serpent, You may eat of the fruit of the trees of the orchard, but, but concerning the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the orchard, God said, You must not eat from it, and you must not touch it, or else you will die. The serpent said to the woman, Surely you will not die, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like divine beings who know the good and evil. So this part of scriptures is when we see the first temptation. 
<coughs> and there's some commonalities that we see in all temptations, even the temptations that we face today. So the first thing is, temptations attack our trust in God. Especially as a guy, we think that we can handle anything. We can handle any family matter. We can handle it because we're guys. And that temptation says, I don't need to trust God because I can do it. So as you see temptations, it's going to really attack how faithful you think God is. And temptations are also just flat out lies. God was very clear and said, you must not eat from this tree. And Satan comes in and he says, didn't God say? And he totally twisted God's words around. So the temptation is lies. Temptations also appeal to our pride. This goes with not trusting God. So when we think that we can do everything, that we can do things better than what God can, that appeals to our pride. It also appeals, uh, it attacks our faith in God. And also temptations make promises that won't be kept. I guarantee you, if you get into drugs and alcohol, whatever problems you're having now, that's just going to compound what you have going on now. That temptation might be, hey, if you do this, you're going to feel better, but eventually you're going to come off of that high, <coughs> you're not going to be drunk the next morning, and it's going to make things worse. So there's a key to overcome temptations. So temptations are typically lies, so we're going to combat that with truth, God's word. You need to know God's word. You need to know the truth so you can know what's a lie and what's truth. And we also need to trust in God's provision. When we start thinking that we can do better than God or God's not giving us what we think we deserve, we can fight that with expressing our gratitude to him. So we are always thankful for what we do have. Um, that helps us um, to realize that we can't trust God. So Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, he's talking about how Israel had failed, and he's giving this church uh, some, he's writing to them to help them to understand why Israel failed in their obedience to God. And he says, no trial has overtaken you, that is not faced by others. So every trial that we've done, we're not the first ones to ever face that trial. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tried beyond what you are able to bear, but with the trial will also provide a way out so that you may be able to endure it. So practically, if you know that you have a certain sin in your life that you have to struggle with, it's always best to not put yourself in that situation so if you're maybe having trouble with like gossiping about somebody, maybe you want to hang around with friends, or even those people that you like to gossip around because you're probably not going to talk about them to their face. So, um, or if you have uh, friends that are strong believers, you're always going to surround yourselves with them, and that way um, you won't have the temptation and be alone to do those things. So it's not us that's going to be able to overcome that, but God's going to give us the power. So God has promised to enable us to do His will in every situation. And He will stand true to His promise, and He provides a way to, of escape with every temptation. He allows that He allows to touch us, namely the power to overcome every temptation. So Satan tempts Adam, and Adam and Eve over to that temptation. And because of that, their relationship with God was severed. And their sin is imputed into all mankind. So we're all born with our relationship to God severed because of our sin. But God, in His rich and mercy, He did for us what we can't do for ourselves. There's nothing that we can do to fix that relationship that we were created for by being good enough, by helping the poor, by <coughs> obeying our mothers and fathers perfectly, that's not going to restore our relationship with God. In 1 Corinthians, Paul tells us what Jesus did to help restore our relationship. He 
He says, For I first pass on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. So Jesus took God's full wrath because of our sin. He took that upon himself. He took that while he was on the cross, and he died. He died on the cross for our sins. And he was taken off the cross and he was buried. But on the third day, God raised him. And that shows and demonstrates that Jesus has power over death. So all we have to do is we have to believe. We have to believe that God did that for us in Christ. We have to believe that it is Christ that did that for us. He took the penalty for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. And all you have to do is believe and trust that Christ did that. Uh, Father, I thank you for this gospel. I thank you for uh, this example for us in the scriptures. Uh, Lord, I just pray for uh, a safe night of skating and uh, in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.